Resurrection Sunday, I thank you for the, the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the grave. That Lord, the reality, if this was not a true fact, all we're doing is in vain. And we're going to be talking about that today. We're going to be talking about the proof of the resurrection. How do we know the resurrection is true? And if the resurrection is true, then when Scripture says we need to accept Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior, we can know that's true too. So, Lord, I just pray you would speak that you minister to your people in Jesus' name. Amen. Resurrection Sunday. How many know that a couple weeks ago we talked about Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem? That he comes in, the people say he's the Messiah, and they worship him, they bow down to them. How many know, as good as that is, that they purchase our salvation? Him coming in as a humble king, did it purchase our salvation? Absolutely not. How many know when we talked about the fact that Jesus had turned around and he had the Passover with the disciples, he washed their feet, he had fellowship with those who he wanted, betrayed him, several denied him, he still had fellowship with them, he had humility, he's king of kings, Lord of lords, and he's humble as he eats a meal with them, he's in the garden, and he's tempted, he wants to quit, and remember what Jesus said? He says, if you can take this cup from me, do it, please. But thy will be done. He realizes that he who has never sinned is going to take sin upon him. And he don't want to take sin upon him because he knows it's going to separate him and the Father. That he is aware of the consequences of sin. That's death. He's fully man. Fully God. And in the midst of it, it says that God even sends angels to minister to him. He must have been going through a lot. But Jesus, when he's sweating drops of blood in the garden, did that purchase our salvation? Absolutely not. It was good what he did, but it didn't purchase our salvation. Then last week we talked about Jesus going to trial and his crucifixion. So Jesus goes to trial. He's not guilty of anything. They charge him for a crime he didn't do. He turned around and is found guilty. He's whipped. He's beaten. He's made to carry his cross. He goes up to Calvary. He's nailed on a cross. And he ultimately dies on the cross at Calvary. Did that purchase our salvation? did not purchase our salvation. Because the consequence of sin is what? Death. So the only way you can beat the consequence of sin is to beat death. So up until that point, Jesus has not beaten death. So that means Jesus is like anybody else. There's some good people out there that do good things. Mother Teresa did some great things. Didn't she? She did some wonderful things. She lived a sacrificial life. She lived a humble life. I bet she cried out to God a lot of times, help me, Lord. I don't know if I can do this, but she's getting old and weak. But did she purchase her salvation? She couldn't because she didn't conquer death. So at this point, Jesus hasn't conquered death. We had the lamb, and last week we, we slaughtered the lamb, and, and he still has his throat cut. He hasn't been healed. Guess what? If I sold this lamb, this Passover lamb back, back up, can he purchase my salvation? Did the, did the Passover lamb purchase their people's salvation? What about the goat? The, the goat of atonement? Did it purchase their salvation? No. They got forgiven for a year. And then guess what had happened? Another goat had to be slaughtered again. So I can sew him all back up and make it nice and try to cover everything up. But he is not going to purchase my salvation. And praise God, because I don't trust him to purchase my salvation. And so we only can trust in one, and that's Jesus Christ. And so the key to the purchase of our salvation is that Jesus had to shed his blood, but he had to be resurrected from the grave. And then the question becomes, did Jesus rise from the grave? Because guess what? If Jesus did not rise from the grave, what do we know? We're dead in our sins. And the Bible talks about that. So listen to what the Bible says. So the question for you is, is the resurrection of Jesus true? Yes or no? You think it is? Oh, then if you come up here and you share because if you're really convinced, then you should be able to share pretty much what I want to share. And most of it, I think you could. So is the resurrection true or not? Well, I don't know about you, but I know me. I was an atheist, didn't believe in God, and I didn't believe there was a Jesus. I didn't believe anything about Jesus. I didn't believe he rose from any grave. That's, a, that's a, just a story. Anybody ever heard somebody say that? Anybody said to yourself, it's just a story. So no resurrection. Our faith is in vain. Do you know that? If there is, Jesus did not rise from the grave, then everything we believe is just phony. It's just fake. It means nothing. It's a dream. It's a wish. So the question is, is Jesus' resurrection real? 
Apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 13, and 14, But if there is no resurrection of the dead, not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is vain, your faith is also in vain. So if there's no resurrection of the dead, and there's no resurrection of Jesus Christ, then everything we believe as Christians is of no value whatsoever. And Apostle Paul says the stripes that Apostle Paul bore, the beatings that Apostle Paul bore, the stoning that Apostle Paul bore and died more than once is in vain. All the travels he made is in vain. All the missionaries over the years, all of it is in vain if the resurrection isn't true. Think about that. Our whole faith as Christians is on that resurrection, on if Jesus rose from the grave or not. So I think we need to understand, can we come to a conclusion that it's true that Jesus rose from the grave? Can we do that logically, not just by faith? And I would argue that we can do it logically, historically, archaeologically, and just common sense logic and just see if I'm telling the truth or not. So let's take a look. Jesus died. He was dead, not unconscious. Listen to me. If Jesus didn't really die, could he be raised from the grave? He wouldn't be raised from the grave. He'd just walk out. Right? So if Jesus did truly die, then he didn't truly get resurrected. And some argue, when well, Jesus didn't really die. Now, I don't know if you know this or not, but I wasn't there. So what I'm going to share with you isn't because I am a key eyewitness to what happened. But I'm going to share you some, some things to think about. How many know that Jesus was whipped and beaten? How many know that he's whipped and beaten so bad that he couldn't carry the cross beat? After a while. That's pretty messed up. If you know what he was whipped with, he was whipped with what? And, and Catherine and I tell us, what was it? It had bones on it. It had metal on it. So when they'd whip him, it would hit his back, and then they would pull on it, and it would rip up the skin. So his, his muscles are starting to show. He's starting to bleed. Veins are starting to bleed. All that's going on. That alone, probably you're not going to last very long. That isn't something that most people go through. Remember, Jesus is what? He's fully God, fully man. So did Jesus fill every whip? So when they went and whipped him, did he fill it? Absolutely. So it says, his body is beaten, he can't carry his cross beat. His beaten body is nailed to the cross. You gone through all that and they start putting nails in you. What do you think it would be? You see, the other guys that were crucified, guess what? They didn't get whipped. They didn't say they got beaten. They just got put on the cross. That's a lot different than you've been whipped and you've been beaten already. You already have a loss of blood. So then they nail him there, and then they try to give him something to drink. You know why they try to give him something to drink? What they gave to drink was vinegar and myrrh. And you know what it was for? It was to try to mellow the pain out. It was like a pain reliever. Jesus doesn't take that pain reliever. How many know when you have pain and you pain and you don't get relief, you go into what? Shock. Can you die from shock? Absolutely. In fact, what's the first thing you get in an accident? What are they, the, the paramedics looking for? Signs of shock so they know how to treat you. Because shock itself will kill you. So his body is going to shock, refuses to be paralyzed, refuses for them to give him anything. He's not getting any liquid in his body. He's suffocating when he's on that cross. How many know when you're on the cross, you suffocate? You can't breathe, so what do you do? You push up on your feet and you pull with your arms to get a breath. What are you doing when you do that? You're pulling on the very nails that are touching all your nerves. So Jesus is going through that. He's suffocating. That's how they died on the cross, by the way. They died by suffocation. This was this happened to be, it was Friday night, and so the Sabbath was coming, so they had to get them off the cross, and they had to get them to die early. So what does it say in the Bible they did? They broke their legs. Why? Because they couldn't push up the legs and breathe. What did they do to Jesus? They put a spear in. And so they put a spear in him, and it says that pours out blood and water. Do you know anything? When somebody puts a knife in you, you don't bleed water. You know what you bleed? Blood. You bleed blood and water when they hit the cardiac sac where your heart is. And when somebody's giving out blood after they die, guess what? All the liquids are coming out. Very significant. Isn't it amazing? God said blood and water. He wanted to make sure he knew that because he knew there'd be some medical doctor sometime that would question his crucifixion. And so you have that going on. Then the soldiers made sure he was dead. 
they pierce it. What did they make sure? Because what did everybody say was going to happen? Jesus is going to rise from the grave. What did the soldiers make sure that's not going to happen? You think they said, well, I wonder if he's dead or not. I would argue if they would question if he's dead or not, you know what they would have done? They would have pierced him ten times. They pierced him one time. They obviously said that he's dead. Then he's put in a body wrap. It says that he's wrapped up with linens. You've been through all that, and then they're going to put wrapping of cloth all over you. How do you think that would be? If you were alive, do you think you can survive that? If you do, you have more faith than that. Think about this. If you have more faith that Jesus survived all that, you have more faith than somebody that believes in the resurrection. Because you're believing in something that's more of a miracle than the resurrection. We need to have the promise of the resurrection. So Jesus obviously was dead. When he was put in that tomb, he was obviously dead. He wasn't just unconscious. That's just one proof that he, when he came out of the grave, he had to be resurrected. He was dead. Now here's something to think about. Is Jesus put in the tomb? And then some argue, when Jesus didn't rise from the grave, he, his body was stolen. Anybody hear that one? That his body was stolen. Okay, so just think about it. Jesus' body was secretly removed. Saying that nobody knew that they came and got it. How are you going to get away with that? There's Luke guarding the tomb. There's soldiers guarding the tomb. So the soldiers are guarding the tomb. Do you think that the soldiers will let Jesus be taken? Why not? They were given orders to watch that tomb, and if anybody messed with it, they were to kill them. And if Jesus was able to get rescued, what would happen to the soldiers? They'd be killed. And did they know how the Roman government works? It's not the U.S. You get the death penalty, and it happens maybe 20 years later. When you get the death penalty then, guess what you get? You get the death penalty. You might get to be on the cross where Jesus was. They know that. So you have that going on. Now I'm going to give you something else to think about. Because people say the soldiers, they, they fell asleep. That's what it was. They fell asleep. So there would be four soldiers. A watch consists of four soldiers. So there's four soldiers there. So you think those four soldiers, they, that all four of them fell asleep at one time. Well, no, you, you say, well, yeah, but they were there for three days. Who could stay awake? No, they weren't. They were there for four hours. Because a Roman watch was four soldiers that would be there for four hours. And then it would change shifts. So every so if you're if you got one guy, going, oh boy, this is a late night. Okay, you got to have another guy going, boy, yeah, yeah, I agree. Oh no, yawn, I'm not going to sleep too. So you have four of them going to sleep. Well, when did they go to sleep? On the first of the shift, or was it after four hours? If they could have stayed awake for four hours, they probably didn't use them in the first place. But what happens after four hours? Another shift comes. So you add the numbers up, you go two and a half days, three days, guess what you get? There was about 50 soldiers watching him. So what had to happen is all 50 went to sleep. But guess what? You got more faith than me. I really believe that he was resurrected. Matthew 28, 12, 14 says, When they had assembled with the elders, they consulted together. They gave a large sum of money to the soldiers, saying, Tell them his disciples came at night and stole him away while we slept. So they're bribed to say that they slept. And they have, the Pharisees have to have that Jesus doesn't rise from the grave. Because if Jesus rises from the grave, everything he said is true. And the Jews could have it true, be true. Because they would lose all power. So they pay the soldiers to do it. Now listen, though, this is what they do. Verse 14. And if it comes to pass that the governor hears that we did this, we got you covered. So they say, if the, if the, if the governor and Pilate hears that we bribed you, don't worry, we got to come. You know why? Because the nation of Israel, the Jewish leaders at that time, had a pact with the Roman government. You take care of us, we'll take care of you. You scratch our back, we'll scratch your back. So there was agreement that, you know what? You just let us keep our program going, and we'll keep your program going. So out of that, what they're telling the Roman soldiers, we're going to give you money, and if you get any trouble by saying you're asleep, don't worry, we got it all covered. we got it taken care of. So all that is happening. So was Jesus' body, do you think it was stolen from the grave? Or are you? Can't be stolen from the grave. Jesus truly died, and his body is in the grave, and it wasn't stolen. Now here's the next one that to think about. You wouldn't understand this unless you know the culture. So the next thing I want to share to you is when the women see Jesus and the women are the testimony. 
So the women testify. They said, Jesus, remember the story? They're at what? The women come, they prayed, and what is it? The tomb is empty. And they go around and tell everybody, Jesus risen, Jesus risen. Now, I want you to think about something in that culture. In that culture, a woman had no rights. Anybody know that? In that culture, women had no rights. Their testimony was no different than a slave testimony. Testify. Do you think people trust the slaves if they went to court? No. If a woman went to court, her testimony was not trusted. So I want you to think about something. Why would God in his right mind, and why if this is Spain, and the disciples make it up, why do they use women to testify that Jesus is risen? Isn't that stupid? Because nobody's going to believe the women. So if you're going to set up a fake transfer of the body, you wouldn't use women to tell people, what would you use? You'd use men. You'd say, okay, here's what I want you to do, guys. I want you, we're going to sneak the body out, because we've got all those 50 soldiers to go to sleep. We gave them some marijuana to smoke, and they got real happy, and they just those off. And so they got all the soldiers to sleep, and then they sneak and they get the body, and they go hide the body, and then they go coming up to the tomb and wake up the soldier, and slap them in the face and say, wake up, wake up. And they turn around and say, hey, look, guys, while you were sleeping, we rolled this tomb away. It's thrown away. Jesus escaped. And then they go on around and say, Jesus raised from the dead. Jesus raised from the dead. Wouldn't that be logical if you're playing a game? But guess what? God doesn't play games. And the reality isn't interesting. He used women whose testimony would not be trusted. He reveals himself to them first. You know what Jesus was given a message? Women are just as valuable and worthwhile as men, that women and men have the same rights. He just left, lifted up the testimony of women. And so then you have it that if God, if somebody's playing a game, women wouldn't be the ones telling that Jesus rose from the grave. If Jesus was stolen, it was a miracle how that could be happened. And if Jesus survived all that he went through, that's a miracle. So, so far, if you don't believe the resurrection, you have three miracles that take place. But you don't want to believe the miracle of the resurrection. But it doesn't stop there. That's all the Bible. Everything I showed you is shared with you is what the Bible says. But you know, you can't trust the Bible. It's not really God's word. It's just a bunch of men that wrote a bunch of stories. I don't know if you believe that. Some do. It's just a bunch of stories. So everything I told you is what the Bible says. So you can't trust the Bible. Okay, just throw the Bible away. Just get rid of it. Do you believe there truly was 12 apostles? Do you really believe there's a man named Peter? Do you really believe that Paul later became an apostle? Do you believe he was an, a, a real human being? Do you, do you believe that all, all the disciples, Andrew, all of them, John, do you believe they're all were real people? If you don't, grab a history book. Grab an encyclopedia because you can get the most ungodly encyclopedia and will acknowledge those men existed because there's too much documentation to prove that they existed. They were real human beings that existed. Now, whether you don't believe there was a Jesus or not, say this to say there was no Jesus. These men existed. And what did each of them do? They testified about Jesus' resurrected resurrection. And they were willing to die for it. So this say that it was all made up, that these 12 guys all got together and say, we're going to make up a story. That Jesus rose from the grave. And they make up a game plan. And they say, this is what we're going to say. This happened, this happened, this happened. We're going to write a fake book. We do all that. And that happens. Those guys are really nuts. You know why? Almost every one of them died for that lie. So if the lie about Jesus being resurrected, if they did see Jesus after he died, if Paul did not have an encounter with the resurrected Jesus, and they're willing to die for him, they're lunatics. They're crazy to die for somebody that didn't rise from the grave. So I would argue logic says that they're willing to die for Jesus, saying he rose from the grave. Logic would say that Jesus rose from the grave. Do people lie to save their life? Listen. Do people lie to save their life? Don't they? Absolutely. How many people lie so they can die? Something to think about. People will lie to save their life. Not too many people will lie to have their life taken. And so the disciples are willing to have their life taken for the sake of the message that Jesus rose from the grave. That's outside of the Bible. That's just history of those men dying for the testimony. This is Preacher Rich D. 
Creating Futures committed to equipping individuals and churches to fulfill the Great Commission, which is the lead of individuals to Christ as their Lord and Savior, so that they may have eternal life, and discipling them so that they may become devoted followers of Jesus Christ. Give us a call at 1-866-WANT-GOD. That is 1-866-WANT-GOD. If you like this video, please click on the link below and subscribe to our Creating Futures channel. To learn about going to heaven, click on the attached video or go to creatingfutures.org. That is creatingfutures.org.